Is Bacall worthy of your universal legendary commander sculptures in Rise of Kingdoms? Well, in this video, we're going to break down everything you need to know. The good, the bad, the ugly, his builds, the best pairings, and more. Because yes, I maxed him the very first moment that he was obtainable in Rise of Kingdoms so that I can get you this information. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming, and we've got to talk all about Pakal, giving you everything you need to know about whether or not you should invest in this commander and how strong he actually is. Because there's a lot of talk, there's a lot of hype, and people are even accusing me of uh, recommending him to everyone when I obviously haven't. So let's just set the record straight right at the start. This is a premier or top tier rally commander who also is okay in the open field. And we're going to break down in this video where this commander is good. I'm going to start with that now. We're going to review their skills to just illustrate why that's the case. We'll give you the builds and then the pairings. So let's start with just like, when is a commander good in the open field? A couple situations. First of all, the number one thing is, do they have area of effect damage? Esong is like the best example of that. He's a 10 out of 10. The next thing that makes a commander really good in the open field is, do they have debuffs? Uh, things that make it so that everybody hitting the same enemy does more damage as well, or you reduce the damage that the enemy is dealing out. Uh, XY is a perfect example of that. He's got actually area of effect damage that applies a debuff that's very strong. The third most important thing is actually some march speed, okay? And the fourth most important thing is, can you reduce the damage that you're taking and how do you do if your march gets focused, which inevitably, at some point, your march is going to get focused in the open field. That is the priority in which I would think about whether or not a commander is going to be good in the open field. Now, if we look at Pakal, he is missing the number one thing on my list, area of effect damage. He is missing the number two thing on my list, the ability to have debuffs, to make the enemy less effective. So he's only got number three, uh, making it so that he can get to and from fights more quickly with some march speed, and number four, which is reducing the damage he takes. In fact, Bacall is a little bit weird in that regard because he becomes most effective when he's being swarmed, but when your march gets swarmed, it's basically the end of the fight, which brings me to the two scenarios you need to be thinking about in the open field, which again, all of this is relevant context for thinking about this commander or any commander investment in Rise of Kingdoms. The first scenario that we need to talk about uh, is what I would call a win more scenario. That is when your march is being ignored. Hallelujah, go to town. You want to do as much damage as possible because your march is being ignored. You're in a big brawl and you are just slaying it. You're laying down the damage. And that's where a commander who's a little bit of a glass cannon like Esong is really very exceptional. They're not hurting you except for some incidental AoE damage that happens to land on you, and you are just shredding people, okay? So being ignored is one situation. We're going to talk about Pakal in that context. The other situation is when you're getting focused. And, man, this is why Leonidas, when paired with Guan, is so strong. Because Leonidas is great when you're not being focused, and great when you are being focused. Most commanders don't do that for you. They're either good at one or good at the other, which there's value to that too, right? Uh, but Leonidas is very strong in both of those categories. There is a third pretend scenario, and this is important to talk about because this seems to be the mechanism by which people judge whether or not a commander is good, is they look at battle reports, and they look at one battle report that happened one time without any context, and they're like, aha, this is good or bad or whatever, right? I just want to caution you around that pretend 1v1 scenario because that's the best benchmark we have. Don't get me wrong. There's not a great way to simulate a big open field brawl without being in a big open field brawl where there's that mix of like, am I being ignored? Am I getting focused And what's happening, right? It's hard to simulate that. And what I'll say is that um, it's the best benchmark we have, but it's just it's just not very good in my opinion. It's something, it's better than nothing, 
but it's not great. And if you want to see all of the battle testing we did with Pakal, 1v1, hours upon hours, there were two live streams where we used him. I'll have a card up in the top for both of those streams. You can watch that when the video is over to see dozens upon dozens of reports with each uh, combination being tested multiple times because if you haven't seen my other video about the extreme amount of randomness that can happen from commanders like Guan Yu, I'll have a card up at the top for that one, illustrating that, again, looking at one battle report could be very weird. It might be representative of a reality, or it might not, and you don't know what you're looking at. So uh, check that out at the end of this video if you're interested. All that to say, where is Pakal good? If he's being ignored, Pakal is not great. He's fine, but he's not great. Why is he not great? Because if you ignore Pakal, sure, your march is going to be very healthy. It's going to stay alive for a long time because you're just reducing damage taken. You have a lot of health boosts. It's going to keep you alive, and you do a little bit of damage. Pakal is just so-so when you're being ignored. Uh, but when you're being focused, that is where Pakal kicks into absolute high gear. He's going to make it so that you are dealing a ton of counterattack damage. You are reducing the damage that you're taking. When you are getting focused... Pakal goes through the freaking roof, and that is where he's strongest. So the question you've got to ask yourself for whether or not you're interested in a commander like Pakal is, what are you doing in the open field? Do you think a lot of the time you're just being ignored? And if so, I don't think Pakal's a great choice. But if you're looking for something a little more tanky, something that's going to deter someone from even attacking you in the first place so that you can run around for a long period of time, do a ton of damage to people, and potentially just be ignored for a while, and by virtue of being ignored, get in a lot of damage, Pakal is kind of an interesting choice. I think the real shortcut to whether or not you'd be interested in Pakal is, do you have Herald? And if you do, you've got not only a great rally combo, but also a great field combo. A lot of people are using Charles Martel with Herald. Great combo. People ignore it. It's not the best combo you can use, but it's going to trade really positive. People talk about how Attila Takeda trades really nicely, really positive all the time. Well, I think Charles Martel Herald does the same sort of a thing. And if you use a Pakal with Herald, I think that's going to be even better or a Herald Pakal. But I'm jumping ahead of the combinations here. Let's just review these skills, which I've been dancing all around, talking all about, right? Uh, without actually reviewing them in depth. So let's just. Hit that now real quick. Active skill, 1,300 damage factor and a shield factor of 500, which lasts three seconds. Don't worry about the duration. I mean, you will, even if you're just taking counterattack damage, you'll work your way through that shield. Uh, the next skill gives you 30% health and also 15% march speed. Also, 5% rallied army damage. So again, pointing to the fact that this commander is really good for rallies. And this skill is the money maker for rallies only. When attacking strongholds or cities, uh, you have 40% increased attack and a 20% chance of dispelling. Currently active, slow, exhaust, poison, other weakening effects. Uh, the number one weakening effect we're looking to remove, by the way, is Herald's self-debuff for defense, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. And the final skill reduces all damage taken by 10%, which in and of itself is not amazing. This is part of the reason why Pakal only really kicks into gear when he's getting swarmed, because... You have a stacking damage taken reduction that can stack an upwards of six times. So an additional 30% damage taken reduction when you're getting swarmed. That's 5% per March, six total stacks max, giving this skill a grand total of 40% damage taken reduction if you're getting very swarmed. Lastly, the expertise skill increases your counterattack damage by 20%. Now, this does nothing. For you if nobody's directly attacking you they have to be directly attacking you in addition you take five percent less damage from all sources for three seconds after using an active skill this effect can trigger at most once every five seconds now this this qualifies for active skills and even Harold's Stamford bridge ability will activate this as an active skill i can show that to you in the log real quick I did a report with Harold Pakal against a barb. That's not what they're designed for, but it helps me make this report right here. Third turn, we got the active skill to fire off. That's Stamford Bridge on Harold Sigurdsson. And you can see here, Stamford Bridge was triggered. You can see here there's actually no counterattack damage boost over here. 
and there's no damage taken reduction until that active skill was triggered. And then on turn four, you can see over here, the Mayan strength ability is triggered. So your counterattack damage is boosted. And also you get the 5% toughness effect. So it does look like, unfortunately, both aspects of the expertise skill are tied to the active skill being used, which is a little bit of a bummer, but points to something extremely important, which is that you want your active skill to fire off as much as possible, which is why Herald is such a good pairing because the Stamford Bridge counts as an active skill. It fires the active skill, okay? So you're not getting any of the real benefit here. You can see it's not over here. You can see it's not over here. Not even the counterattack damage boost from the expertise skill of Pakal until you fire off an active skill. So a rage engine is very much desired. And this only can trigger once every five seconds. Unfortunately, I think it's a little bit of a bummer. I kind of wish they took that portion of the effect off of Pakal, the, the five second delay. I mean, obviously that would make him just stronger, but um, a conditional 20% counterattack and 5% damage taken reduction is a pretty weak expertise skill in the grand scheme of things. Uh, but we'll talk about some ways to generate tons of rage. In fact, let's go right into the talents right now. And there are several builds we need to look at. In fact, because he has the defense infantry and conquering tree, he has so many options, more options than we've ever had on an infantry defense combo because never before have we also had the conquering tree. So Several builds we can look at for rallying, and I'll cover this only very briefly. If you're using Pakal in Canyon or uh, for rallies as the primary, this is the build I would recommend, 10 out of 10. And the thing you're really hunting for is Desperate Elegy. I made a detailed video about how insane this talent is. Card up in the top if you'd like to check that out. The long story short is that when you get below 30% of units remaining, you're going to get 25 rage a second. Man, that's good. But it's not good in the field because you shouldn't be fighting in the field if your march is down to 30%, right? So uh, it's good in Ark of Osiris. Sure, you're going to run your march into the ground, but it's not good in most situations in the field and it's going to make most duels look really weird too. So this is a good rally build, a good canyon build, a little bit of flexibility with where your points can go here. I have Undying Fury, but obviously if you're rallying to break a Yadviga, then Iron Spear is going to be the better pick. You also could shave off a bunch of points and go for Buckler Shield, giving you 9% counterattack damage taken reduction. And you could go even further into the Conquering Tree if you don't believe that Desperate Elegy is the magic that it is. I don't think this is the right build to use, but this is what it would look like. I made it because I was curious. Uh, if you really wanted to get Entrenched, which is a great talent, 3% damage taken reduction and 3% damage dealt for three talent points is amazing. The problem is that some of these points along the way, moment of triumph, it's just, they're just not all that great. I don't love them for long running rallies. So those are the three rally builds. Again, the build I think I would advocate for is this one over here. And I even rallied uh, with this build in the video where I unlock Pakal. And I've talked about a bunch of videos, card up in the top. You'll watch that when this video is over. When it comes to open field builds, I think this is the build I would recommend for open field if you are using him as primary, but you're not going to pair with Herald. And the reason I say that is that um, you probably want the Herald as the primary, but also Stamford Bridge triggers effects like this one over here because it counts as an active skill, medicinal supplies. I didn't pick that up. I didn't feel like I had the talent points for it. Ideally, I really wanted to further reduce my damage taken, right? Like, just go all in on reducing damage taken so that when people swarm you, they just kind of get wrecked. Like you're barely taking a, a, a lot of damage and you're dishing out, well, a decent amount of counterattack, right? I think this is one version of an open field build that's really solid. Of course, I had to get loose formation, reducing the skill damage that you take. And if I really wanted to make a few sacrifices to try to get medicinal supplies, I mean, let me whip that up real quick. So here's how you could get medicinal supplies on Pakal and still keep the full infantry tree. I just don't love what's happening here because I don't have strong of body. I don't have fleet of foot. I don't even have the march speed over here, which is really good. So there's one point left over in this build that you could work with. You could put it in any one of those things that you wanted. I suppose if you wanted to really shed 
march speed, which I think is not a good idea for the open field. And if you wanted to shed march speed manipulation, here's just one more build we could go make for the field that um, would be good with a herald secondary. Okay, here it is. The please ignore me build for a Pakal primary with a herald secondary. Yes, we'll patent that right now. The please ignore me Pakal herald build. And this is a perfect build for that, by the way. If you're being ignored, you're going to stay near full health, okay? And you don't need as much march speed to escape combat because hopefully you're not getting focused. They're ignoring you. And if they're ignoring you, you're going to love the benefit of medicinal supplies. Every time an active skill is getting used, you're getting healed. So between the shielding and the healing, your march is going to stay very healthy. If they do turn on you and focus you, you're reducing that damage you take pretty significantly. Also, you're just reducing incidental AoE you're taking from other marches. We got some nice march speed over here, which is kind of um, beneficial. Then Buckler Shield, reducing the counterattack damage that you take, which if all you're taking is people's AoE damage and counterattack damage, yeah, reducing counterattack damage is pretty good. And we also got the health boost right over here. So I think this would be a great open field build, especially when you pair with Herald. But of course, you could use this with other commanders as well. I think it'd be pretty strong. Now, when it comes to combinations, obviously, I've been honing in on one meta combo. And I think it's fair to say that Pakal Herald or Herald Pakal is a meta march. It's very strong. It is going to have more sustain than pairing with Alexander the Great uh, and perhaps slightly less damage than the Alexander the Great pairing. And again, that's really the sort of trade-off you're making with commanders, uh, how much damage they're dealing and how well they can take damage. And I think that Pakal deals a decent amount of damage and takes damage very well. He's sort of a step in the direction of being more offensive than the Charles Herald combo. You use a Pakal Herald or Herald Pakal, and that is slightly more punchy. I think it's an upgrade, and I think that's probably the very best combo for him. And I'll say that Unfortunately, that's the case. The other combos you could look at is like Alex Pakal or Pakal Alex. Uh, depending on whether you want more punch, you make the Alex primary, you want more tankiness, you make the Pakal the primary. Obviously, Alex is a really strong commander in a lot of situations, but the extra march speed is amazing. The shielding is just going to make you very survivable. Also, uh, by the way, uh, when you are shielded, you have defense instead of attack. So when Pakal's throwing his shield up, I think this will trigger. I should probably go test that to confirm. Uh, but you'll have a really solid, mostly ignored march that's unfortunately, though, not doing area of effect damage. I I just don't love Pakal with Alex, but I think it's one of the better combos. And the last kind of non-meta combo that I think you could use would be a Guan Pakal. And the thing that I struggle with with Guan Pakal is that it's going to do really well if you get focused. It's it's going to do better than it would have, you know, like an Alexander the Great gets kind of melted pretty quickly. But it's not going to be as strong potentially in the scenario where you're getting ignored. That's the thing that I sort of struggle with, right? This is, again, the thing I kind of struggle with for Pakal is that, like, yeah, I compare him with Guan Yu, right? And I don't know that I'm going to get maybe significantly more damage than an Alexander the Great. Like, Alexander the Great's giving you a lot of attack. The attack's really good. He's going to debuff a lot of enemies. That's really good. I feel like that is a better combo to bring to the field than Guan Pakal, right? Like, Pakal will bring tankiness, but Pakal is almost kind of greedy in that way. Like, he's protecting himself, but he's not contributing to the rest of the field fight in a super meaningful way, which again is, you know, one of the problems I sort of struggle with for this commander. And I'm not saying, by the way, that Pakal would be bad with Constantine. He'd be great with Constantine or with Richard I or with Charles Martel. Like, there's no infantry commander where you'd be like, oh, what a bad pair that would be to, to use him together. But it's just not exciting either. Right, Leonidas, Pakal, like, I just don't know why you're bringing that. It's not really meta. Like, you should just be using Guan and Leo. Like, that's the pair. I guess the last combo that I really do need to talk about that really did not perform well in 1v1 reports, but might actually be quite good in the field, is going to be CJ with Pakal. That could be kind of interesting because 
both commanders are, I use this word greedy, but both commanders are just doing the thing that they do and not otherwise contributing to the group fight. CJ does really strong single target damage with some occasional AoE, and he's boosting his own skill damage. Pakal, really tanky, does a little bit of damage, right? So you could put the two of them together, um, and I think it's a balanced march. If you get focused, you're going to be fine. If you're not getting focused, you're going to do a fair amount of damage. In fact, a lot of damage, and you're going to top off pretty nicely, uh, but it's mostly single target damage. I think it would work well as a combo, but I'm not yet convinced that it's a meta march. So I guess all of that to say, uh, Pakal is a really great rally commander, like I said at the start of the video. And for the open field, I think he's fine, but I don't think he's game-changing. I also don't think he's overly game-changing in Canyon either. Like, you could use him in an offlane again with Herald. Uh, but I tried using Guan Pakal, and I just didn't think it did as well as my Guan Alex in uh, Canyon, so I wouldn't recommend that either. I think he's really great for rallies. He brings infantry a rally that they didn't have. In fact, infantry has always wanted a great rally. Infantry has pretended to have good rallies for a really long time. And I'm not trying to knock infantry, but, like, people try to rally with Guan for forever, and it's just okay. It's always just been okay in my eyes. People have tried to rally with... Alex Harold, I have tried to do that, and it was always just okay. You could debate, like, if you're multi-rallying, it was good, but was it, like, top tier? No, right? Not in the same way where it was for a time, like, you better rally with those archers. You better rally with those calves, like, you know, we had up to this moment in time. And I think now we've got an infantry rally where it's like, man, that is a top tier infantry rally. You rally with Pakal and Harold in one combination or the other as the primary, and that's really great. And he's also good in the field. The same recommendation I made to you on the very day I unlocked him, which if I haven't run out of cards, check out that video and the other videos I recommended with those cards in the top. Hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, throw a like on here and consider subscribing. That supports the channel and it's 100% free to you to do. So what are you waiting for? Why would you want to miss out on all the good stuff that's yet to come? Subscribe! And until the next time, you have fun. Smashing the kingdom.